Hey everyone, welcome to another Friday Night Bee Chat. And we'll go ahead and get our link posted here. Hope everybody is uh, having a good time, had a good week. Maybe got into your bees uh, this week. And all. Yeah, we got the link. Yeah, here we go. Invite. And there's the uh, pin. Hey, Bob. Hey, hey. How you doing? Well, pretty good. I am uh, have to step away from the edge, man. I'm out there. You know, it's getting ready to be time to put supers on. Yeah. I mean, like really start supering them, not this little one box, two box thing, right? <laughs> so I go out there and I'm in the honey house and I'm getting my uh frames with no found you know with no wax on them put into boxes getting that all organized and i'm like i've got 35 40 supers over there to start pulling out to put them on you know heaven forbid i put them inside with in a enclosed room uh tons of wax moth damage really? so yeah it was i didn't spray them or use paramoth because like my dogs are in there as well and I don't know how the fumes and the dogs and all that's going to interact. So mm -hmm. needless to say, about 35, 40 frames of just destroyed comb and frames and boxes. So I'm pulling them out and had some outside spraying them off. So, I mean, best case scenario, because I used a lot of plastic frames in the past years you right can scrape them i guess yeah i can scrape them but seven pounds of nectar to one pound of wax right so there you go there's a honey even though i feel like it was going to be my best year because i had more comb and the comb that i just left in my extractor after spinning it out perfect never touched it stuff i stored in the corner kind of ruined you know so, and that's and that's um, regular honeycomb. I didn't uh, comb that had. Um, well, some of it know? may have had some brood in it at one time because I usually put the super on, let them build up, then shake them down and put the excluder on. Right. Right. So now you know I just waxed a bunch of frames, so I'm low on wax, which means I'll have to buy some wax and wax some frames. You know, all stuff I really don't have time to do. So that right. means. It's going to like uh, Hobby Lobby or somewhere and buying it very expensively to to do what I got to do. I'll check with Sam in the morning and see if he's got any beeswax. And then, uh, you know, drop back and punt. Or I guess I could pop all the medium foundations out and buy some simple comb. <laughs> and just, just make some uh, pet comb honey in the little trays, right? I guess that's an option. But it, it's just, it just exemplifies it gets, it gets aggravating. My frustration with beekeeping, right? Either your bees die and you have plenty of comb to build those bees back up. And then you go because you think, oh, finally, I've got drawn comb in my supers. I did a lot last year. Everything should be good. Boom. No, kicking the balls, right? <laughs> Kicked right in the non-binaries <laughs> to, 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 to knock it down. So I got to look at your 
some of your videos today or the one you were digging in those couple of them hives and they look good population wise. Looks like the Queens are doing great. Fresh Queens. Yeah. So, I mean, that was a, uh, when I got it, it was three frames of bees and brood and two basically undrawn foundations. So, and that was 19 days ago. And I've already got a, a second on them and, you know, pulled up a frame of brood. So seven frames of brood, that should be 15 plus frames of bees in a couple weeks, right? Yep. So it should be good. So hopefully, um, you know, hopefully I can get that comb drawn out. I've got 170 frame deep frames out there that have never been drawn that are waxed that are ready to go. Um, yeah. it's just, you know, you, it sometimes it just feels like you can't win. And, uh, you know, it's, it's to the point to where you're like, somebody come and get these damn medium boxes and frames and just sell the shit and get it over with, you know, <laughs> it's fuck. sorry, excuse oh, my wow. friend. Just yeah. close this, close this popsicle stand down, you know, uh, it, and to make it worse, it's like I've I've run out of liquid honey, right? So now I'm missing honey sales. I've got the customer demand and don't I can't make enough honey to to make that happen. And then you go out there and you're like, okay, I should make a lot more this year because I got all these supers. Well, no, I don't have these supers. I do have supers with frames, but now I've got more work, right? I've got to scrape all them down, clean them up rewax them give them back and hope that there's enough of a flow that not only can they draw that comb out but now it's draw and store right so yeah uh so yeah it's just a challenge you know so uh my frustration's a bit high today so i've got a little barley pop here <laughs> to uh <laughs> <laughs> I just comment. want to shout out to uh, Mars Homestead there. All right, Matt, when you get off work, come on in. <laughs> well, you nice know, I, I, I'm i seeing what uh, the honeybee compound is putting down there. Um, I don't have the freezer space to freeze all the comb that I need to, right? Um, so that's an issue. Um, some of it today when I was put, adding some supers, I scraped off the... Uh, um, the wax moth damage and, and gave them the frame, right? So I don't know if they're going to draw from the comb and draw it off of the frame like they've done in the past, or if they'll start drawing because there's a thin coat of wax on there. I don't know. Uh, it's been my experience with plastic frames and foundation that once you get that original coat off, you have to basically get it all the way back down to plastic rewax it, and give it to them again. Yeah. Um, so yeah i was out there yesterday i guess it was and um i was going through some hives i was pulling queens getting ready for introduction to new queens this weekend and i had some drone comb out there that wasn't pre-waxed by me and they didn't touch it and i just pulled it out and i did that guy gave me eight medium frames of drone come i completely rewaxed it with my own wax so, so i did, i did send ian a message uh because ian used some liquid spray on his comb last year and said it worked really good to keep the wax moss off so that's probably what i'm going to try to do this year um assuming they can draw it all out and, and save it and we'll see you know it's just frustration you know, you know, I feel Brad's frustration a bit. Not to the same degree, because I understand, you know, he's starting over with bees. I have bees. Um, Darren says he's thinking of going to plastic. Now, Darren, are you using no. um, regular real wax foundation? Or, um, I mean, I always use plastic. I use all plastic frames. I mean... Well, okay, for your situation, they work, and they worked for mine until I bought the uncapper, right? right. Then once I bought the uncapper, they, the plastic frames don't 
stay on the little bars on the uncapper very well, which is why I decided to only use those in the brood box and try to cycle them all into the brood box and pull the wooden frames up uh, for honey. And uh, and that works great. Um, yeah. But, you know, it, it's just <clears throat> an, always an uphill battle. You know, always. I know, it's just like here, you know, last year I had a... A wonderful year. I had bees. I had boxes of bees like Ian has. This year, I got a 50% lossage and, you know, um, kind of, you know, basically back to square one almost buying, you know, reworking, putting nukes in, putting new queens in. I will have to say the queen or the hives that are our queen right and have bees in them, uh, they're doing pretty good. I mean, there's a, a good, a uh, good um, population, but as I was, I went through. I had seven hives that I want. I had some of them were my own nukes from last year, and they weren't. They just, uh, you know, I get in critical of watching what the brood pattern looks like or how much brood are laying. Uh, mm -hmm. Are they doing a lot of drone? You know, there's there's one thing about yeah, there's some drone over here. But it, when it's drone everywhere else, it's like, okay, she's failing, you know, and she don't have the, the sperm in her to keep giving them, you know, worker bees and things like that. And um, Sertan, Bob, Lloyd says it's Sertan. All right, I'm, I'm going to get some of that because uh, apparently I need it. So anyway, um I went through the high. I found five out of the seven queens I need to find and got them isolated. Well, and I've got queens that I've marked when I put those nukes in. I can't find her. I see eggs, so I don't need to find her. But I can't find her, and she's got a big-ass green dot on her, you know? Yeah. And uh, in case you didn't see the video today, because some of you guys didn't, but I mean... That's one of that's one of the frames of brood. I mean, yeah, I saw that video. She's. I mean, she had some other frames that wasn't cap, but it was from what you were explaining was totally laid up. Yeah, I mean, she. I mean, again, it's only been nineteen days, right? So the brood that was in there hatched, and this is all fresh laid stuff, and they've drawn comb, so they've done a lot. So, yeah, but now, see, that's what I'm getting at, is that picture right there. When you start seeing, you get in there come springtime, and if they're, you know, she's up at, you know, winding up, getting things raring, and you got four frames of brood like that, let's say, in the hive, and it slabs, now you got yourself a good fresh queen. Now, when you get to the point where she's spotty or not just, that had some holes in it, but what I'm talking about spotty is, you got a little patch about yay big and it's sort of like, eh, it's okay. Eh, she, you know, I'm, I'm learning, you know, from my experience this year that, you know, it's time to get rid of her because she's I, wore out. I saw, um, you know, it's funny. We were talking just the other night about um, packages versus nukes using foundation versus drawn comb and all of that stuff. And then, Barnyard Bees came out with a video about why is my why is my package shrinking, right? Well, and he says right in there, well, it's going to go backwards. You're probably going to go from three pounds down to about two pounds of bees until that first round of brood comes out, right? And that's just death. It's just happening uh, all the time. You may not see it. You don't. You're not going to see it in the bottom of the colony because if they're good bees, they're going to be hauling all that dead out and dropping it off somewhere but um it's just you know the the constant i guess where my frustration comes in is the, it's just the constant uh okay either you need comb right so you buy all these frames and they use your honey up <laughs> drawing comb right which is great now you have fresh comb then you got the wax moss that come and destroy the comb or you get your colony good, and then the hive beetles come or the varroa mites come and wipe them out. 
right? And it's just a constant battle. Battle, right? So you're trying to sell honey. Oh, well, they didn't make enough honey because of all this other stuff. So you're not selling the honey. So it's, it becomes kind of a downward spiral, you know, to where you're just constantly pumping money into the operation. And uh, guys, just getting to the point I can't pump any more money into this operation. It's either got to sink or swim. And right now it's kind of sinking. You know, to be honest with you, um, I would like to say, oh, well, beekeeping is just great. And the actual art of beekeeping is great. However, all the BS that goes along with it makes it not fun sometimes. <laughs> right? Am I, I'm, I'm not, I, I'm hoping. It's not, not fun. It makes it frustrating. Yeah. It just, mean, you know, you still get to the point sometimes where you just throw your hands at me and I'm done. I, I mean, that's what was happening. I was outside spraying these frames. Well, I had that moment here or two or three, I guess it's been three or four years ago where I had nukes promised. I mean, I had about 20 some nukes out there at the time, probably about 10 honey hives. And I'm going to say I lost, shoot, I had probably 80% loss or red or more. And I was like, you know, what the heck happened? You know? Well, and, and I just saw, I was like, I was devastated. And uh, you know, like Brad, I mean, my gosh, there's a guy like, he lost everything. You might as well say. And, well, it, and uh, you know, he's taking it. I think he's taking it away. He acts pretty darn good, but yeah, uh, better than I would have been. I'd have been yeah. like Facebook marketplace, uh, you know, <laughs> 50, 50 uh, medium boxes, 500 frames, medium frames. <laughs> I'd have been making a post probably. But, you know, it, it's for me, it's it's just one of those things to where, man, I keep waiting for this great or I'm not even I don't even care if it's great. Just a better than average honey flow. Right. And if it is. I don't have the equipment to even capture that because the frame, the wax is now wrecked, right? So uh, even if they'll fix it, what, what I find is uh, when they do decide they're going to fix it, they will actually tear it down and then they'll put new, new comb there, right? They're not going to like repair. Sometimes they will. If it's a little low, they'll repair it. But I'm saying... Once wax moss have gone through the bottom of it, they rip that whole section out and redo it. So it's um, for me, it's just the frustration at this point, you know, with uh, with getting it done. And here's the other thing. Right. So I need to draw a comb. I don't dare put out feed. First of all, they're not going to hardly touch it because it's <laughs> some nectar. Flow. Bug man, I've seen that, Chris. Uh, what's that guy that, that has no comments and. The world's against him. Oh, and, uh, yeah. And he's got that indoor screen. A peaceful portrait. mind. It keeps the hives inside the house and all this kind of peaceful crazy. Peaceful mind, stuff. yeah. Well, he had 150 hives and he wound up with nine. But you know what? I watched some of his videos just because he does. A, I like to hear him rant sometimes about what he's talking about. But the thing is, the one thing he blames it on everything but himself. It's always everybody else. The farmers, the neonicotinoids, the whatever the hell he wants to blame it on. But it's never his fault. Ever. Sure. He never did anything wrong. Well, this last one, I didn't get to watch the whole thing. But he said he made a bunch of splits, killed the queens, put new queens in, and he made small splits in the fall. And, you know, they too damn small of a split, I guess. It sounded like to me that he's the one that messed up there, that he well, blamed himself. Chris did say he, he did. Well, and that's an anomaly because generally that's not the case, right? Um, but I think that's human nature, right? It's always somebody else, something else, someone someone else caused this or something else happened. Um, I, I try to be a better beekeeper, right? Is there... Should I have sprayed my uh, combs with the Sertan and all that? Yes, absolutely. However, I also have dogs that are in that area as well. 
And I don't know, I'm not trying to kill my dogs to save my comb. So, you know, I don't know if uh, the Paramoth or anything like that. Now, probably a little bit of Paramoth probably wouldn't hurt them. But when you got 50 supers in there with comb and you got a bunch of Paramoth in there, it might be a different story. I don't know. Um, so, you know, a lot of times it is self-inflicted. Doesn't make it any less frustrating, right? It, it's It's still one of those things that we just, deal with and try to uh overcome and i'm not special guys i mean i'm i assume everybody has the same or similar issues right um i haven't gone through all those combs maybe it's better than what i think it is but pretty much if they're at the top where light would have hit them they're going to be at the bottom where no light would hit them right um hey tom uh, and maybe i don't know i mean i i invested in freezers over the years um you know just go through it and see what you can dig out yeah that's what i'm gonna have to do and uh put them on there and you know maybe the bees do some surgery and repair it i'm sure it's not the first time bees have ever seen wax moss in their history they're usually pretty good about maintaining things um but they should be going out and getting honey not fixing comb right <laughs> but you know it happens i guess so how's the rest of your splits though i mean you did what 20 some splits 20 30 splits where you got new or maybe it was five frame nukes uh well i made wheat splits right and added queens to them some of them are doing good some of them didn't like the queen and knocked her off right so which is pretty much the same as anything um could I have done the splits earlier? Yeah, but in true Bob fashion, I don't tend to wait all the time that you should and things, you know, <laughs> how you should. So the ones that are make the ones that accepted the queen and took her are doing good. The ones that didn't, not so much, right? They're kind of struggling and trying to build a queen. And uh, and to be honest with you, those were all those pissed off bees anyway. So I don't care if those splits make it. I kind of need that. A equipment and frames anyway for when Jose's Queens come. So, um, so it works. I mean, it works out. It, it's not the best. It's not ideal. Obviously we want them all to make it, but, uh, it would still, uh, it's still working, working out. Yeah. Hey, Tom. How you doing, Tom? I'm doing good. Got another, another swarm today and my nice. box at Holzer Hackman Garden Center. And I'm just now posting it in the no life. Cool. It'll be showing up soon, Bob. And your hives are doing all right? Yeah, I'll be putting the rest of the supers on this weekend. That was my plan as well. Have you had experience with spritzing them with sugar water? Does that make them come through a queen excluder? Or they just kind of leave the sugar water on there and don't mess with it? Never heard of that. Well, I've heard of people taking a bottle of sugar water, like one to one, spraying their foundation or whatever, and then putting it in the box for the bees to come up and start cleaning it or you know getting on it. They all, and, I've heard it where they'll make you know make them entice them to draw it. So what I've done is basically uh, had a deep and then a medium in the past, or a deep or two deeps. Then I'll shake them all down, right? And then I'll put the queen excluder on there and put that box back on top of it after the bees are all in the bottom. Then they'll naturally come back up to cover any brood or whatever in there. And then it's not a problem. But uh, before that can sometimes be an issue. He said he never had any luck with it. I usually take my frames, you know, I got double or triple wax on them. And I'll let them sit in the sun for 20 minutes. And it kind of melts it a little bit. Then I stick them in there. Man, they seem to love that. What about your drawn combs? Once you've got them coming through an excluder or anything, no problems. They just come right up in it. No worries. Yeah, they come right up. I use metal ones. You know, the, they got the rounded, a little bit mm -hmm. smoother. I don't see any problems with it whatsoever. Because I do single group management with one deep, and I put queen excluders on them, and 
I still get my 80, 100 pounds of honey. So. Well, that was kind of my thought this year of trying to go uh, get rid, get away from the mediums a little bit. And, you know, hey, with no comb, that makes it much easier to do. But the wax that I have or the foundation that I have that I've waxed, it's still unwaxed foundation that they have to draw, right? So, um, right. so hopefully, uh, you know, getting them up there and getting them working on it won't be that big a deal. We'll see. Well, is the flow flow in your area? It's it's a little flow right now. Once this privet pops open, it'll be on pretty full. So I'll get May, you know, I get a little bit of April, then I get May, June, and then harvest, right? So they have to do a bunch of work. So right now my goal has just been to try to get those bees and nukes that I've got strong enough to where they don't have to draw comb in their brood box and she can keep going. And they'll start working up. Um, and so I'm starting to shake shake the bees down and put excluders on and add the boxes back so that brood will start hatching out. They'll start backfilling it. Right. Now, like today up here, yesterday was a pretty warm day. Today, it was, it was overcast and spitting rain. and It was like 55 degrees. And kind of one of them cold, damp days. And all we were had, we had, I had my winter coat back on, put it to you that way. <laughs> well, it was snowing up there, Brad. And I'll know yeah. by Monday if we're going to have a good flow in Southwest Ohio. We're supposed to get down to 37 Sunday morning and 37 Monday morning. And right now that's okay, but if it gets a couple of degrees colder, that'll hit the uh, black locust trees. Right. Well, we got another couple of weeks for that. I was saying that a little bit earlier today on the live stream that, and I said it, I think the other night on the live stream that it seems like even when the spring is early or what we perceive to be early, mother nature always seems to average it out. Right. Yeah. By the end of the season, it's right where it should have been. We have, you know, cold days in there that ruin some stuff and too much rain or something in the middle that kind of, stymies it um and then it all ends up being the same so <laughs> we'll see if it well, I, it seemed like this year it started a little early but now it's actually a little late because usually the black locust trees in my area blooms the second to third week and it's it's still a week away at least so this getting cold might not hurt it which is good late late april is a lot better because the chance of frost after that is it's way down. The uh, well, I'm I'm hoping everything keeps going the way it's going. Um, you know, they seem to be drawing the comb out. I haven't put any feed on them or anything like that to help them with it. Um, because I don't want any sugar water in any honey, right? So they may take it, um, but it's it's not really just like exploding like I would have hoped, but we'll see. Maybe we'll give it some more time. I don't have any choice, right? It's going to do what it's going to do. There's no control over it at all. Um, I was just hoping for a better year than the years past and it may still happen, but at this point I'm not uh, overly optimistic at it. I got, I'm feeding that swarm I caught today. I got a gallon of bucket on them. Hoping you know, draw out eight pieces of, Deep foundation. Well, that should, they should get at it pretty quick. I mean, even that one, it was a little two framer, right? It's got a queen laid it up. I dropped it in there, the first uh, six framer. I put four pieces of foundation in there, and, you know, it was less than a day, and there's not that many bees in it, and they were already on the other frame drawing it out. So, should be a, uh, should get on it pretty quick, I hope. Let's see, watching the. I'm gonna grab a drink, guys. I'm out of beer and have no more, so I have to get some. All right, but uh, so Tom, you got you been in your hives much? Um, 
not my regular hives, but I've been in my um, nukes, my in my monster hive. I've been going through all of them, and I didn't get as many as I thought I'd get. I think I got five queens out of nine. Make it back. And one of them, well, the sixth one superseded her already. <laughs> it's got uh, queen cells in there, and I couldn't find the queen. So I got six out of nine. Well, you know, that's not bad, I think. Yeah, it's not bad. But usually in the spring, I usually get to do a little bit better than that, you know, before the birds and dragonflies and all that show up. Yeah, but in the dragonflies, mostly in the fall type, or is it dead set? Yeah, yeah, more in late summer. I still haven't caught that swarm on that. Hive that's got those really, really good VHS queens from the Cincinnati Zoo. So I'm hoping to catch some of their swarms. Yeah. But um, I don't know. I'd like to say, for me, I like I said, I went through them yesterday. The day before that, it was dark and overcast, and I tried to get in a couple of hives, and they kind of lit me up. So I closed them up and I tried to get into a, just a single box with 10 frames and I still couldn't find the queen. So yesterday it was still gray overcast, but it seemed like the sun came out in the later than the day or in the late in the evening. Hey, Todd. Hey guys. Hey, Todd. And uh, so I did find five of them and I got two more to find and um, hopefully three or four days will be enough for, them to accept new queen i got to get in there and check for queen cells and stuff like that or you know supersede your cells or whatever right. you and, probably got some rain coming we got rain last night yeah it rained today some okay. um, it it sprinkled and then it didn't do anything but it was cold and wet and damp i mean i had my winter yeah. coat today that's how cold that's it how it was this morning and, and then uh, the sun came out so I did that, got the bees separated, but you know, it was as I was digging through, I'm looking at the brood patterns and looking how much brood there is. And and I was like, man, you, you could tell these they were like, Yeah, they, this one here is pretty good. And the other ones are like, man, it's like spotty, you know. I mean, she's laying, but not laying solid sheets or solid frames right. of brood. And I'm like, this and I said, these they're just wearing out. And, the splits, I, a couple of splits I did at the end of March, I checked them yesterday, and some of them had two or three frames of brood already already capped out. So that was you know a little less. That's three weeks. So I was like, oh, I was happy with that. Yeah, they're going to be exploding real soon, another week. But I just, I guess what I'm saying is, is I've. I'm I'm learn I'm starting to look at the hive differently as far as the queen engaging yeah. uh the quality of the queen. And I, uh, I I pinched two queens this week just because they should have two or three frames of brood and they'd have a little patch about this big and I said, You're gone. Well, see, I'd like to say the one nuke that it was a replacement nuke from last year. I can't tell you where the queen come from or I wasn't, I think it might've been one I grafted or something. But anyway, like you say, you had a couple frames in there and maybe about, you know, solid pieces like that in there. And I'm like, yeah. I, I, want, I want something that's, you know, jam. And uh, right. so um, I'm replacing all them. And I found a land worker. I had marked it land worker or re reevaluated definitely land worker. And, um, like I say, now tomorrow it's supposed to be sunny, so I'll go hopefully get into these two last hives that are pretty um, pretty heavily populated. That was another thing I got in. I went and took my hive lifter out there, and I picked up one super plus the brood chamber on top, and I hooked it in, and then I got my hive tool and broke the seal apart, and then instead of me using the hydraulics, I just I had it kind of the wheels are on the back were raised up, and I just kind of pushed it down, kind of like a like a seesaw, and it just uh, brought, that, brought that those two boxes right up, and it just uh, and I just rolled it backwards out of the way, and it held the boxes perfectly. You didn't have to raise it way up in the air or nothing like that to 
push the weight to the back of the of the uh, machine. And um, uh, what was I going to go with this? Oh, uh, there were just there are many bees, and they were getting quite mean. And uh, so I decided I went ahead and put an extra super on the uh, honey super, so it would draw more of those bees up out of the brood area and um, diminish the amount of bees so I could find the queen better. So I'm hoping that'll actually right. help me out. So, Hey, how, how's Todd, the uh, sw uh, swarm meister doing? It's, it's all done now. <laughs> he picked up, he picked up his hives. What's that? The guy picked up his hives. Yeah, he, he got them about a week and a half ago, maybe two weeks ago. Yeah. Okay. You got what? Six worms out of that thing? Oh, I got a lot more than that. Really? <laughs> yeah. 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 I probably, uh, I, I, there was at least a dozen that I captured. Yeah. That was crazy. But now yeah. mine started swarming too. And it's because of work. Work is getting in the way of the fun stuff. So, and raining on the weekends doesn't help. Yeah. Uh, you know, I, I know. That's like a couple of days ago. It was nice and bright and sunny during the middle of the day. And then it got dark and, you know, cloudy in the evening. Yeah. And uh, like I say, you, you're trying to work got in the way. I'll put it to you that way. Yeah. Yeah. Eight more months. I don't have that issue. Work getting in the way. Yeah, I mean, it sucks, but it is what it is. Yeah. So what's Phil doing? You're in the workshop? Uh, I was, but I'm not right now. But yeah, I, I'm, I'm making top bars. They're taking forever, too. Still got about 150 left to do the next cut on, but yeah, it's going to rain here tomorrow all day, too. So, can't wait well, it's till supposed to be halfway decent Saturday and sunny here in the next few days, the next week. So, yeah, it's supposed to be cool. Uh, one thing I am thinking about doing is I have some bees just probably a couple hundred yards down the alley or the street that I caught. I was thinking about moving those here tonight and letting them. Just closing them up all day tomorrow. Mm. Maybe they'll maybe they'll reorient when I open them up on. Oh, that's like um, Sunday, Sunday or Monday. Right. That was like last night. I had um, I had one rack clear of the nukes, and I had moved them when we had like about five days worth of rain. So they were they were caught inside for four or five days, and then they could reorientate. And then I had two more racks. Two more uh, nukes there that uh, had bees with queens and all and on the second rack that I wanted to clear off. So I cleared off the dead out areas of the nukes that I had. And it was late in the evening yesterday, which was almost dark. And I just picked them up, ratchet strapped them together, picked them up and carried them over. And, um, it was cold today, so they were, you know, pretty much held inside, you know, because of the temperatures, they stayed inside. There wasn't very little bee flight. So I'm hoping that will help reorientate them to their new location. And so I'm, I'm steadily, you know, as, as, as best as I can, re, um, you know, getting my hives or the hive area, apiary, lined up for the incoming nukes that I'm going to get and uh, getting my hives the queen for the new queens that are coming in. And um, that's where I'm at. Yeah, it gets frustrating, like you say, with this darn weather. You can't get nothing done in the evenings after work because it's dark or whatever. But um, I just, I just kind of said to myself, you know, it is what it is and I'll get done what I can get done. And that's all that you can do about it. You can't yeah. find it. Yeah, I want to move a, a, a nuke from my mother in law's house. She's about a quarter mile away, but tomorrow the high is 61 and the Sunday the high is 67. So I, I, I think I can lock them in and I don't have to worry about them overheating mm -hmm. at that weather. So it's probably the only, probably the last chance I will get to do something like that here. <clears throat> so, yeah. AJW. 
Evening, folks. How's your W? So what you been up to? <laughs> My usual. Did 21 splits yesterday. Wow. Finished up today. Straightening stuff up. I had a, I had material I thought, and bees scattered every place. I thought you was retired, JW. Retarded. ED. <laughs> So, uh, did you have queens, or you just made like a walkaway split? I had some queens that I've got. You know that I told you I got from Will Banks for to do my uh, my drone yard with, and then the rest of them was most mostly uh, uh, some uh, double screen board splits that I pulled the tops off of them and put them on on different. You know, I put everything on the individual stands, Charlie. So that's. I pulled them tops, tops of them splits off and put them off by themselves. They had days full of drone cells and stuff. I cut most of them. I didn't get through every one of them, but I cut most of them down to two or three uh, swarm cells when I pulled them off. Well, did you put them in like five frame nukes? Uh, some of them in nukes and some of them in eights. Mm hmm. Well, and then now what do you got? A hundred hives? Oh no. <laughs> uh fifty nine should have. Way too many, I can tell you that, for an old man. <laughs> yeah. Hey Steve. <coughs> yeah, I think I'm down from to twenty six hives now because I've been selling nukes and just throwing the other bees into my other hives just to boost them up a little bit out of my eight frame nukes. Yeah. I'm trying to hold off on grafting. I'm trying to get that one swarm with that queen that's unbelievable with, with her laying workers pulling out drone <laughs> pupa that had mites on it. It's like, I want to catch that swarm. Now I want to graph from that queen. That sounds good. Yeah, it's I don't know. It's I it was one thing I noticed in the hive yesterday that the hives are full of, of drones. Just you know, frame full frames full of drones in there and everything. I'm not sure whether they're actually um, mature, but I'm sure they're getting close to it. <clears throat> Yeah. Daisy says he's happy years in smoke, Bob. Uh, happy on mute. I'm mute. I did. I did that just I for you, Steve. The other day, I was talking to my mentor. We were just bullcrapping about grafting and all that, and he told me that when queens get mated, they can't. It takes them ten days to process the sperm. Where they can start laying. I've heard, and, I've, and I've kind of seen that with my mating nukes. Yeah, I've heard seven. Seven. So I, I, I heard it. Well, he told me it takes like five days before they're mature enough to fly, develop the wings and all that. And then yeah, another they, 10 days hatch out, before they, they can lay. Those, yeah. those mated queens that I put in last Thursday. Um, that six frame, the one I did the inspection on today, uh, she just had legs, er, legs. She just had eggs in there, eggs and uh, you know, just hatched larvae. So it took her about a week, um, about a week, even though she was already mated, to start laying in a new place. So yeah, of course she was locked probably up. Shrunk years, down. So. Probably shrunk down a little bit and had to swell back up. Swell back up a little bit, right? right. What, what is that? Do you know, what's what's shrinking down? The ovaries or what? Yeah, I don't know, but they I do. It, sure. Yeah, <clears throat> that's interesting because you think the bee stopping her from laying would actually make her get fatter, right? She'd get backed up, but it's the opposite. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I bought I, the only two queens I ever bought the first year I had bees. One of them was super tiny, and 
I thought maybe I got ripped off. I put her in there and I came back like two weeks later and she was big and plump. Well, they don't feed her, do they, boys? I mean, you know, to, to make her slim down, they, they cut down on the feeding. That, that'd draw her back on her laying, you know, so. Yeah. Yeah, but what what is the chem or physical reaction? Why is that, you know? I well, know. We'll have to ask Corey Stevens. Same thing time. would happen to me if I quit eating. I'd slim down a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's, yeah but that's, that one. Still not, that's still not the correct answer. But my queen would have some black eyes if that happened. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Well, I, I did some queen splits, and I went back in to check. And, well, one of them the first time, but another one the second, uh, just a couple of days ago, had virgin queens in there where they should have had mated queens. And what I'm thinking is that that cell I gave me that wasn't any good or they tore it down or whatever. And they raised their own from the, from the eggs and larvae that were stuck. They in literally there. lay a little patch like this and then they make like three or four queen cells in it. And <laughs> well, that, they, had, they didn't, they didn't have time to do that, but I, I definitely found two virgins running around in, in there after, in one case, it was like 21 <laughs> or 22 days. In the other case, it wasn't that long. It was only like 14 days. But if, they, if they'll go out and mate, I don't really care. That's how I okay. am. Uh, there's, Brian's got a good answer there. The eggs develop. Egg cell. Ah. Yeah. She's developing a lot of eggs at one time. As well, she's laying what they say, what, 1,200 acres a day, something like that. That um, makes sense. <laughs> you see Hanley Homesteads? My wife bought me sugar-free pudding. My next wife won't treat me like this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's right, because after your divorce, you won't be able to buy any pudding because she's going to get half your money. <laughs> <laughs> or more. I I had I was running out of swarm lure, so I had to bottle some yesterday. <laughs> and I took I must have took 250 bottles in there for my wife to label, right? She's got to label them all by hand. So I keep, I joke with her. I said, I, I dropped them off at the labeling department, right? So she's sitting on the couch doing them. And I said, you know, you better watch out. You might get fired and get replaced with a Mexican if you keep giving me a bunch of crap. She <laughs> <laughs> didn't, didn't like that too much. <laughs> No, it's got to be a Honduran. Me Mexicans are out this year. Go with <laughs> or Guatemalan or something. Yeah, yeah. Got to go further south these days to get your labeling help. I, ironically, I told the guy that today, Philip. <laughs> Mexicans are close enough to us. They've got lazy too. You know, <laughs> you have to go to you got to go to Central America to get them that will work now. I'm doing another B class tomorrow. Intermediate one. Really? Yeah. Did one not the past week, and now I'm doing one this week. Two weeks ago, I did one. I'm doing another one. So how do you how do you uh, set that up? How do you advertise and all that stuff, Tom? I work. I got two friends that I went to high school with that owns a garden center, and I do it at their place, and they advertise it for me. Oh, cool. They've been doing garden, and this garden center has been around for 40, 50 years. Do you do it for free, or do you charge people for it? I, it's free. Oh, okay. I, I figure they come by and buy my nukes and buy my queens, since then they get to know me. That one of those uh, University of Guel Pats, Todd. I can't. No, that's a California no. beekeeper hat. Yeah, that's Jose's. Oh, okay. that's Jose. And a better bee shirt, it looks like. Better bee shirt. 
boys are dressing up for the occasion. He's a damn nasty, yeah. a NASCAR beekeeper over there. Got logos uh, everywhere. Yeah. Well, I just grabbed the first hat that I could off my dresser, and it happened to be Jose's. <laughs> Got to wear a hat. Didn't wear a hat all day because I was at work, so... Did you hey, get Bob, out? I, um, about those uh, wax moths, I use the Paramount. Well, I use the Walmart brand. It's the same thing, right? Right. But what I do is I leave them outside and um, I put a telescoping lid down. Then I get a foamy and I make sure I don't cut. Well, I cut it large so it goes across. If it was. If I if I put it on top of the boxes and then put the the telescoping lid down, it would it would you know the extra length of the foamy would fall down around the the boxes so you get a good seal. Well, I do that on the bottom, then I start stacking them in. Uh, I use ten frame boxes, so I put nine um, nine frames in there. I go about four or uh, excuse me about six boxes high. Then I put um, a paper plate. Then I put about, I don't know, it's about a cup or so of those crystals. And then I um, I put an empty uh, super on there. And then the same thing on the top. I put the foamy on top, and then I squeeze down the telescoping lid. And then I wrap the seams with, uh, you know, clear uh, that plastic. But you leave them all outside. They're outside all winter, yeah. No you problem. don't have any problem with water getting in the... Telescopic well, lid under the bottom. That's why you want to make sure you have a good seal on the bottom with those foamies. Uh, you could also wrap if you if you want. You could wrap around the base of that telescoping lid up up onto the box a few times, and that helps. Yeah. But I don't do that anymore. And then um, I don't have any problems with with wax moth, and the smell is strong. For a couple of days, but that's only because um, that that plastic wrap doesn't uh, kind of fit tightly around the you know the seams between each box. But it's it's not it's negligible. It won't it won't um, it won't hurt your pets even if you put it in the honey house. Okay. So yeah, let me tell you how I do mine, Bob. It's pretty close to what Todd does. I get mine from tractor supply and they sell it in a in a moth ball form but it is the mm -hmm. paramoth it is the paramoth and that i searched around that was the cheapest price i could yeah. find was from tractor supply which is unusual because usually it's more expensive they do have to order it it takes a week or two to get there but what i do is uh well, i do it two different ways out here here in capel i just put it on my rack i put down an, uh, an inner cover and i if there's a hole in it i'll tape that up and then I'll start stacking the supers. And when I get to the top, I'll put a shim, like a three inch shim, and I'll put a paper mm -hmm. plate. And I try to put like oh, a minimum of five or six mothballs, but at least two or three per box. So if you, you know, if you stack nine high, I probably don't ever go over 10 or 12, you know, that's always plenty. If you put them at the top, that gas, that off gas is, it's heavier than air, it, it goes does. down. Yeah. So. I do that. Now here I don't wrap them with tape or anything, but they do the moth balls dissolve quicker if you don't seal it up. So mm -hmm. I have to put them back on a little more often, but yeah. Down at down at the farm, I put them inside. I take one of those uh oh those little furniture mover things you can buy at uh at uh Harbor Freight. Right. And I'll put an inner cover on top of that and screw it down so it doesn't move. And then I'll start stacking them. And then on those, because I can spin that thing around on that mover, I take uh, one inch painter's tape and I just go around each seam. Mm -hmm. Now that's inside. I don't have to worry about the water getting to it or anything. And I do the same thing at the top. But what I've found works really good at the top is if you have a, uh, if you have a, fume board because that fits exactly on the box the fume board does right so and it also acts as a spacer so that's what i use out there and i don't i, I like todd i don't have any trouble at all with wax moth well and, and you I know what i forgot one 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 in, one ingredient i forgot was the mothballs like what philip said he uses the mothballs but i used to use mothball crystals those were the best for me 
but you can't find them anymore. Walmart never seems to have them in their stores. I buy them at, you know, the hardware store for, I buy one pound of mothballs for eight bucks, I think. I put that bag in a gallon Ziploc baggie and I go in the garage and I take a mallet and I crush them. And then I just pour that onto the, onto the plate. Well, I, I, I just use them in the ball form and they dissolve down to nothing mm -hmm. that way too. You don't have to crush them if you don't want to. I, for some reason, I've always preferred the, 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 the crystals because they seem to work out better for me, but. Well, the ones I, the supers I left outside, you would think would be really susceptible, right? Um, now, the wax is dirty now from being outside. Don't misunderstand me. However, it's not wax moth infested. The stuff that I had in the honey house is, and as I'm pulling frames out, moths are like flying, right? Yeah, and, just, uh, yeah, you got them. It's warm in there, so yeah, they didn't, yeah. they didn't get any, they didn't get any cold weather at all. Now the ones here, I, I don't have any trouble until the spring comes around. But the ones down at down at the cabin, if I didn't have the Pear moth on them, the wax moth would be in them all year long because they're inside. So now, yeah. when you say mothballs, you're make sure that it's it's, yeah. uh, it's the uh diachlorobenzene, absolutely. Yep. Hey, I'm, gonna go, I'm gonna go grab and, now, it. and I always remember it this way if you the normal mothballs, which are um starts with an N, um, napoline, I think it is, yeah, yeah. N means no, no. as I, what I always read. If I see the N, that means no, you don't use that. But the benzene is is the one that you use. Parachlorobenzene, uh, that's the one yeah. you don't use, right? Yeah, diachlorobenzene. Is the one you uh, use. See, I got these ones here a couple years ago from uh, offline on uh, Walmart. Uh, and these were like little cakes. And yeah. but I went and checked them again, and somebody was saying they were really high, and darn they weren't. They they just like tripled in price. Yeah, they stopped making the crystals at well, they they stopped selling the crystals at Walmart, and they jacked up the price on the on the moth balls. It's crazy. Well, I was looking at the Sertan on Amazon. It's pretty expensive. The liquid. We a pound uh, a one pound bag of. Uh, of that, of those, uh, well, I make them into crystals. Um, I'll get about, I could get four stacks. Three, that four. That's exactly what I, what Philip has. That's what I get, except I, is crush. that Walmart, Philip? Yep. No, no, Tractor Supply is where I got these. Tractor Supply. But no. that's, you could get that same brand at Walmart. Yeah. I, I found that the Tractor Supply price was, was less uh, than Walmart. <laughs> um, this is a one pound, four ounce bag. Yeah. And I think it was only like seven bucks or something for this. Mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, this is that uh, that whatever you said, P dash di mm -hmm. whatever chlor. Yeah, but yeah, it's exactly. it's the mothball form like yeah. that. But once you open this, it doesn't have a reseal. And I wouldn't trust it if it was resealable. I always put in a Ziploc bag because yeah. when these come in contact with air, they start to off gas and dissolve. Yeah. So. Yeah. Make sure you put them in a Ziploc when you store them, and they'll last I, for all for, for years, probably. Oh yeah, I did uh, six stacks this year, and I had six. I just have 54, 54 frames in each stack, so there are fifty-four I boxes. Stack, problems. I stack them as high as I can reach, and I hadn't had any issues. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that stuff, like Philip said, it floats down, so you want to put it on top. Some guys put it on top and in the middle, but all you need to do is put it on the top and add more if you feel like it. Right. You do want to check them every month or two, mm -hmm. every couple months. Or, yeah. Uh, and add add to them. Uh, yeah. Once exactly. you put it in there, that's not going to keep the bees out for the whole season? It Well, moths, moths can find any tiny little opening so yeah you, you want I, what i like to do is open it up if there's any trace at all of the mothball in there it's still working but if it's completely gone you probably need to get some more in there i may be wrong but i got my oh i put all i store all my boxes in a a uh, 10 foot uh, storage container uh -huh. and stack them in there and then put the plates up the top and then 
they run a little wind fan inside of it. Circulated uh, around. And Gas the whole thing. It yeah. pretty good for me. It's a little more expensive than boxes are than stacking them outside. But, but yeah, and you can do it that way. I I get away with just stacking them like what Philip Philip does, and then um, <clears throat> then when then when it's time to get them out or or you have to plan ahead. I leave mine laying out for about two three weeks. Let them air out good. I put them on the side. Yeah, I only had outside. like nineteen boxes of honeycomb and like three or four boxes of full size comb that I was protecting. Whoa. So it was just, it was just two stacks. Mm -hmm. so I only had 40 supers get tore up. Man, that's just, that, that, that's, that, that, that sucks because that's going to hurt your honey crop. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> yep. An already uh, fledgling honey crop is now decimated. <laughs> so but the, that's, uh, that's the trick, though, Bob. If you get a chance, you sh you know maybe you think about trying that. It's uh, it's not that expensive and uh, it works great. Does hey Bob? Did all your comb have some brood residue in it? Because if it doesn't have brood or pollen, they usually don't touch it. You might have well, some in, down in there. It, you, it, you know, it wasn't some of it. They ate all of the comb was missing off of it. I mean, not even anything. Um, so. Like I said, typically what I'll do is I'll throw that super on there and let the bees come up, and she'll and she'll always, well, always, but you know she lays a brood pattern in the middle, and then I shake all the bees down and put the excluder on and put the box back to hatch out. Um, so usually it gets a round or two in it, um, but well, I guess I can't do that no more. <laughs> what, what you what? And it's a little late to tell you this now, but what you should do is when sometimes you'll have that with that's been laid in, but in the spring they'll fill out some of your comb and it won't ever be laid in. You mm -hmm. ought to always guard that against the queen. Once you get one drawn out, it doesn't have it never had brood in it. Don't ever put it unless you put it above a queen excluder because or, you know the stuff that, that I left in, more valuable to you because you don't have to protect that from wax moth. The funny part is the stuff that I left in. I mean, it's still in my extractor right now, right? I never took it out after I spun it. It's still got honey remnants on it and everything. And, though you know, those things don't seal up perfect on the lids, right? And nothing, no problems with that at all. Just the stuff that was stored and stacked up. And the darkness, um, they, the dark, they love darkness. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I, I looked up the, uh, the stuff that you got, Phil, and it is uh, the chloro chlorified benzene mm -hmm. and I, uh it's seven dollars bob I had, and i i and i it, they did charge me a little bit of shipping even to ship it to the store so i bought like seven or eight bags of it to kind of mm -hmm. offset that because what's the brand the on that Philip? pardon it's the interruption it, i think i got that same brand off of amazon in the crystal it's form. It's yeah. it's E N O Z. He knows. He knows. He knows. Or yeah. You know, yeah. I'm not near my stuff right now. Or I'd look, but it's. Uh, uh, I don't live where I keep keep my on the farm where I keep the bees. So I, 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 I don't know if it's. They say to let it air out for about three days, but I only let it air out for about a day because when I go I, to the farm, I take the lid off of it, and then if I use it, I. The, I think I got that in crystal form, Todd from Amazon. You might. Look on yeah. there. I may be wrong. I may be really in crystals. Right? Yeah, they're selling crystals, but it's just the same if I just buy that bag and crush yeah. it myself. Hey, mm -hmm. They also sell it in a, like a little urinal cake. Yeah, barely got yeah, there. That's what I had. Um, and now, Todd, why why do you like the crystals, the powder versus balls and whatever? Uh, I think, and this is just me, I think that whatever little airflow there is, you get a better gas off. You get more surface area of the of the crystals, the gas off, because you want that a you want that initial flash to to get whatever's in there. Run them out. After that it slows down. But. Does it kill them or it just keeps them from it? No, it kills them. It kills them, it kills and, them. And, it, and and it keeps them from it. And the eggs, everything. I mean, it yeah. it. Um, but I, I, feel like I, I, I agree. I agree. They would do that. Uh, they would kill them faster because you're right. It, but I think it also won't last as long because you're it won't, you know, yeah, it won't. down in the smaller pieces. Yeah. I mean, and that's you, why you have to look. 
you know, probably the best thing to do would be to smash some of it and then get a couple of those wafers for long term because I bet those take a long time. Oh, to, I'm, to yeah, probably probably one a stack for a whole season, I'd imagine. Yeah. yeah. But yeah, that's 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 how I take care of it. But like I said, I leave I let them air out for two three weeks. I don't mm -hmm. I don't want any of that. I just yeah. don't have time to do that when I'm down at the farm. I only got a couple of days, so I have to. Yeah, I actually start. I do it in January. I start let or February. I start letting them out, and uh, and you're right. You don't have much trouble, but this year I, it started getting warm, and I started seeing a few moths around the lights. I'm like, I'm not taking the chance. I put them back on. Now the other day I went through all my supers, and anything that had traces of brood in it. I put that on anything it didn't. I took it out and put them in separate boxes so I can use that immediately. I don't have to wait. And I didn't put any back on that stuff. I just kind of graded it out. The other day when I did go out there to mess around, I lifted up a lid and I had a large wax moth on the, the, the top of that lid and, uh, you know, underneath. And um, I took, I gave it the high tool test and I've never seen a, a wax moth blow up like it did it must have been full of eggs it was nice and juicy it just it popped like a zit it was <laughs> it was <laughs> it was bad those damn things are hard when they know you're after man they just yeah. go crazy and move it's yeah. hard to, it's, they're not like hive beetles they're, no <laughs> you're chasing them all over the place they know they know yeah you got the the, the little ones are really the hard ones the mm -hmm. bigger ones are a little bit easier but mm -hmm. they'll go flopping around too yeah the greater and the lesser that's what those are yeah <laughs> like what Brad said. <laughs> Cajun Brad. What did you say? Are you crushing Lee? <laughs> yeah, I've been I've been busier in the dentist at a trailer park this last couple of weeks. I've just my bees are so far ahead of me now, it's just I'm toast. Man, all that all that orange blossom, I bet they are. Yeah, uh, and and I can't find any of it in my upper super. So I think what they're doing is they're going right behind the queen and and storing yeah. it in that second deep. And and tomorrow I'm going to start pulling those deeps up, put a excluder underneath them, and let that brood hatch out. But by by the time that brood hatches out, oranges will be done. It's what the 19th, so there's probably another week, week and a half left. So yeah. it is what it is. You got stuff coming behind that, don't you? Oh yeah, privet, tallow, uh, the blackberry starting to to pop a little bit, but there's not a lot of blackberry around here. The wild blackberry. Um, what else? It's good. Right now, that's about it. So, uh, Phil, it says it's twenty ounces for that bag you got there. So, is that? How big is that? Is that a pretty good? Is that like a pound or a pound four ounces? So you you kind of dump all that in there, or just a couple. No, of it? no, I just put. I probably won't use more than a bag or a bag and a half for no more than I have. But I bought like six yeah. or seven bags. Yeah. But, uh, I use probably in a stack of supers nine tall. I'll probably use a dozen of those balls in there. Yeah, because I got the cakes, and they were real cheap when I got them here several years ago. And like you say, I'll put the cake up on top of the uh, – I put a shim and then the lid and all and put that cake up there in its mm -hmm. uh, plastic uh, holder. And it was designed for a closet. And um, like you say, you know, you can let it sit there for several months, and it'll dissolve yeah. over time. Let it do its work. I didn't have any problems. You leave yours outside, do you, Charlie? Freezer, huh? JW, you leave yours outside now nah, and down in the basement. I but the majority, oh. I only had a small stack of, of stuff that I couldn't fit in the freezer. Yeah, over the years, I was able to get some used freezers, chest freezers, and stuff. And um, it's like one time I did see like a wax larvae or something crawling across the freezer. Of course, it was dead by the time I seen that. <laughs> you know, because it was getting froze. 
So you but, take your frames out of your boxes that you put in the freezer then, is that correct? I put the whole damn box in there. Oh, do you? Jeez. Um, you've got a lot of freezer room, man. Have you got many boxes? <laughs> yeah. Well, I ran out of freezers. I had one freezer I bought for like 75 bucks and then a couple other freezers I bought brand new and and I happened to get a grant and stuff. So, um, you know, like you say, I'm with this expansion of my honey frames or my honey hives, I'm going to, I'm going to be like you guys. I'm going to be running out of places to put them. And, um, I can put it out here in a shed outside, you know, where it's going to be cold in the winter time. Once it's cold, it ain't, you know, you don't have a problem with it. The thing I'm I having mean, trouble with is rats and mice getting into my well, stuff. Is that right? Yeah, I, I actually I just it, it was sitting on top of one of my hives. I had done some work and I left some they had freshly drawn comb, but they had stored some pollen right in the middle of the comb. And the rats went in there and not only did they eat the comb, I use those fishing line reinforcement. They cut every damn fishing line and not in just the frames that had the comb, but the ones between the side of the box and that one. So I've got to go back and restring a whole box of frames. Because of the damn things. Yeah. I, there is a feral cat that comes by, but some of these rats look like they're as big as that cat. Those are huge. I was going to say, I could send you about 20. <laughs> I used to have feral cats. I love them, but we've gotten a problem around here. There's bobcats and coyotes that yeah. come up out of the ditches. And then the fogs them. bother them. They kill a yeah, bobcats killing a lot of my cats. I can tell you, the little ones. Yeah. I, I don't think the coyotes bother them because they can, you know, jump yeah. across fences and stuff. But the bobcats can go right after them. But my neighbor has a cat that she lets out all the time, and she's taking pictures of it on her roof, hanging out with the bobcats. She's befriended them somehow or another. Oh, be dang! She, she's not even half the size of them. Yeah, I don't think we have bobcats around here. We got them all over. That's what that's what next door is for. Is to post pictures of bobcats in your yard. Hmm. Are they about the size of a cat or bigger than a cat? They're they're, they're a little bit bigger than a good sized tomcat. Probably hmm. about four inches 15, tall. 18 pounds around me. Yeah. About what's the a lot meaner. <clears throat> The, uh, I guess my coyotes have kind of disappeared or got hit by cars or something because I'm starting to see more like wild turkeys and deer and stuff like that in my yard. That's kind of interesting where you live at, Bob, that you have all that kind of stuff. Heck yeah, we got it. Got it all over the place. Hmm. Yeah, I expect them to be in the mountains for sure. No, they, they, you know, everybody, no, they don't allow to discharge a gun in the city. So we even have some wild hogs that make their way up here every now and again. Yeah. They're discharging guns and mice at you all the time. Well, you just have to buy yourself an air rifle. <laughs> Enough for hogs. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> Make that hog mad. Oh, nine millimeter, you have to double tap them to kill them. Yeah. Yeah, you better hit them good with that nine millimeter. Air rifle won't hardly take a rooster out around here. <laughs> well, what about them ones down in Florida? Boy, they're taking them Magonas out real quick. They must have they got, they, them rifles are like a thousand bucks or more. The ones that they're using, I got a what is it a point one four four? Is that the air rifle size? Point and seven seven is the or one seventy seven, right? Maybe it's one seventy seven. Yeah, and then there's, and I've, I've got a twenty two caliber one of those. You you can headshot a rooster and it'll just stun him like a zombie. He'll walk around stunned in a daze. You have to double tap him with that thing too. <laughs> I won't tell you how I know that, but um, but yeah, you heard I had a rooster issue. 
That's what happens when you incubate your own eggs. You end up with 15 roosters running around your yard. Uh, <laughs> Brian so, wants to know if you guys got any Aphrodite bees. I think Bri uh, Bob does. <laughs> I bought mine, though. <laughs> he imported those. He imported those from Florida. Yep. Those new ones I got are definitely not that. I got some. I got some hot ones, but I'm still not. I'm not going to call them Africanized. They don't. You know, they, they don't attack me. You know, when I was going through the, whatever. the nukes today, I was like, "Man, that's perfect sized grafting larva right there." I'm looking at it in the frame. I'm like, "Shoot, I should have just grafted up a bunch and shook a bunch of bees in." Yeah, as far as. Um my queens that I pulled, yes, I got them in two frame mating boxes right now. I'm going to uh, put them in there for right this moment and all and um, use them as resource queens or zombie queens, as Brad would say. Yeah. I have one hive at, out in the, at the farm that was real bad, but I just went out there right before I left and I pulled them apart, killed all the drones, but I, I found the queen. So I moved her over into, I pulled a bob and moved her over into her own nuke, made a split. And when I get back out there uh, tomorrow or Sunday, I'll, I'll see if they made a new queen. I'll see if they've calmed down. The last ones I went in and killed all the drones in, they calmed down after I did that. Yeah. I, I do have an announcement about Tuesday night stream. Uh, I will be having a Tuesday night stream. However, it's not going to be a traditional stream. Um, I'm going to be helping Brad out. Um, and the Manitoba Beekeepers Association is having Tom Nolan give a presentation. So I will be streaming that stream and presentation to my channel. So um, Tom Nolan with uh, Formic Pro will be doing a presentation. Tuesday night, and that'll be streamed on my channel. So if you want to watch that, you're welcome to come and check that out. But it's not going to be the typical like this chat that we have. So hopefully yeah. someone asks them about the heat and killing queens and stuff like that. I'm sure that'll be a some of the questions that come up. So that's with Formic Pro. Yeah, Tom Nolan. Uh, the people that make Formic Pro, uh, what's the name of the company? Nobby. Nob. No. No. Right? no. no. Yeah. Yeah, that is a Canadian company, isn't it? Yeah. I believe it is. It is. Yep. Um, and then on the same lat line on my show next Friday, if everything goes well, I will have a special guest coming in and doing a presentation. I just got an email tonight that he would be able to do it i just had to pick out a date so if the if next friday works out i'll have it listed on my uh um uh, whatever you call it announcement thing so should be a it'll be a commercial beekeeper here in the united states and um as a he has a cow and extractor and all that kind of stuff so sassy fresh tea boys you drink that's your fresh tea, Todd, when you live in Missouri near Tom. What what kind Sassy. of what was with the iced tea? Sassafras. Oh, oh. No, I have never tried that. Is uh, that code for bourbon? Well, you dig up the roots and boil them. <laughs> you know, you I, know what a sassafras tree is, don't you? I'm sure Tom probably does. Yes, sir. Yeah. I don't think uh, they grow in California. No, they do mm. not. No, but I did have a, a little, uh, well, I had a little friends with the, the iced tea. I've had Jim in there before and Jack in there before. It's not too bad. Yeah, yeah. That, uh, that Deep Eddie lemon vodka is good with iced with tea. Yeah, it's not too bad. I'm more of a sarsaparilla guy myself. Yeah, what is sarsaparilla? <laughs> it's like a root beer, right? Yeah, it's root beer. It's good. Oh, all right, Matt here, he did a couple splits. 
and full of bees and five nukes and the swarm cells cut out. That ought to work. I had an unusual yeah, degree. If you want to hear about it, I had a young lady that that was helping me, and I was tear, tearing out some, uh, some queen swarm cells. And she was picking through them, and she picked the head off of one of them, and out called a bee. It was still alive. It'd been, I, I, I dug it up, oh, probably five hours before, and I was telling her she could take those and use them, make sure and keep them down, and all this crap. And I just throwed them in a cup. She was digging them out. She said, This one's alive. So I took it and stuck it in the queen cage. It wasn't <laughs> even fully mature, and I don't know if it'll live or not. I stuck it in a a three frame uh nuke and and see if the queens will or uh, throw the couple frames in there with it and see if see if they'll accept her see see what happens she's still alive was this today anyway i thought that was kind of unusual mm. jw did you bid on that property that i was bidding on because i got out of bid <laughs> no not hardly. <laughs> you know that thing sold for one hundred and twenty-two thousand bucks. I don't doubt that. Pro uh, property is ridiculous. I mean, people around the country, people's trying to get out of the cities. They're like you. Yeah. The was that the West Virginia property? Yeah, one hundred twenty-two thousand is what it went for. So, did I ask you what county that was in? I don't. I don't know what. You no, know. it was about midway to Lexington, Louisville, Kentucky. I think it was. Yeah, it was by Parkersburg. Okay, I'd be could be Pike County. That's kind of a. But yeah, I got out bid on it. I'm like, damn, JW done bid on it. And <laughs> yeah. no, I don't think so. I was waiting on you to contact me by email. I got your property. I'll sell it to you for a low, <laughs> low price. <laughs> right. There you go. There you go. If you had JW's, yeah, we just have to get him to sell his plane. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you boys don't want to believe all those rumors and get started around the area. They're totally untrue. But now I gotta round up some wax so I can wax these foundations I just blew the old wax off of. I haven't gone through all of them. I got uh, that outfit that you Lappies sells that, you know. Oh, Lappies does? Yep. They're one of your I see on the you've got yeah. them. Yeah, they they're selling my lure, so yeah. I'll have to uh Maybe I'll re well. I'm gonna talk to Sam first because that's like right here. Yeah, I got some, I got a little dab from them to wax. I was running short on wax to wax frames with, same as you're doing. And to make you feel any better, I uh, I scraped and rewaxed, scraped, pressure washed and rewaxed sixty frames that was old and this week. I got about. I was all black and stiff and nasty, and I just scraped them all off and pressure washed them and rewaxed them. The um, trying to see if I had uh, well, I had a. Uh, it's amazing how much, how fast that wax goes. Yeah. Like my crock pot was just full, right, and. Uh, and I started waxing foundation, and all. Next thing you know, I'm short. And you must well, have waxed a bunch of them, man. Because how okay. did you wax it, Bob? Did you take a brush, or did you take a? No, I, I roll it on, but I I wasn't planning on those supers to need it, right? So I wasn't sparing at all. I was putting it on heavy, heavy, yeah, heavy. Did you? I find that it's all I kind of the roller is that you fill the divots in too much mm -hmm. instead of just kind of hitting the tops of the of the cell walls. 
so to give you an idea, um, I started, um, this was, this came out of my crock pot that it was like almost 10 pounds yeah. of wax. Plus I still had some, right. That I had poured on top and it was layers that I broke off and melted. So this is how much I've gone through that whole thing. So, uh, yeah. So now I need more, probably another 10 pounds or so of yeah, wax. That's one of my regrets. I didn't buy some of Bob Benny's wax when I was at the expo. He, he had big 15 pound blocks for 75 bucks or something like that. It was cheap. Well, I think uh, if you get it from uh, Michael's, I believe it's $20 a pound yeah, over you there. Can, you can get it online for about 10 in a few places if you buy 10 pounds or more. But like I said, he had it for, he had it for, that, I was thinking it lasted $7 a pound or something like that. Yeah. I wonder how much lap is. Now Daisy or Steve here talked about right foundation. Yeah. Uh, Steve, a um, friend of mine is a dealer and he says that you want to buy the quick draw, which is the heavier wax. The rest of it that you buy, there ain't enough wax on there for them to do anything. Yeah. They'll chew it off. What do you got coming up, Bob? Uh, I'm looking to see. Yellow filtered beeswax, $8 a pound. That's what I was thinking. Eight. Yeah, yeah uh, Brian bought 200 pounds from Bob over there this past January. Yeah. But then we'll figure if you buy a bunch, then you got to pay high shipping costs because of the weight, right? So, yeah, Tom and Melissa made 12 more splits today, so they must be up about 150 highs. Well, the ones I've got look pretty good. I just wish, uh, I don't know, maybe it's not too late to, uh, to make some more queens, but I still have 25 coming, so... Well, I don't know. It's like myself here. I'm sitting here. I got nukes coming in, and I have I found enough deep boxes that I can drop four nukes right into deeps, and I got some wax uh, drawn comb. And um, I'm hoping that even though they're just a nuke, that they'll she'll, you know, with the wax and everything, she'll lay up like crazy and there'll be enough to maybe at least get a super, maybe two supers of honey off of that this year. And then um, the other ones where I'm putting requeening, hopefully all the queens will take. And uh, uh, that with the amount of bees in those hives that, that I'll get up, I'll, I'll get, I won't get no thousand pounds. I'm sure of that, but I can, at least, like, maybe I can get half of that, you know. Any, anything's better than nothing. So that's what my plans are. So uh, Matt and Sarah are, are uh, Matt and Sarah. <laughs> Tom and Melissa has got almost just short of 150 hives. About at their max. You know, I would be at my max way a long time ago. <laughs> All right. Hey, Mark. Mark's working on a second box of stuff. I need to call old Mark. I might try giving him a call tomorrow. What's that, Lloyd? What's BW? Uh, beeswax. beeswax. How much beeswax you need, Bob? Lloyd's going to Oh, I could probably use 10 or 20 pounds of it. Would probably help me out a good bit. What do you mean, Joey? According to Mr. Ed, you guys are going to have a bumper crop. He's probably talking about swarms. I don't know what a bumper crop is. Never had one. <laughs> but you never had enough bees. 
Now you look like me. You're starting to really make it. You know, you're you're high. Well, you could use that, Charlie. I got 170 unwaxed deep frames right there in new boxes. Unwaxed frames. Well, wax that either came on them or the wax that I put on them. Right. But I mean, I went through and uh, even I had some acorn frames that I hadn't used and I put them on uh, filled filled up all the boxes but really if uh, if if I and I still have boxes that are outside that have no frames in them right so I could use I mean I could frames and wax I could buy till my heart's content I, I would feel like Brad or one of those guys, James, you know, hey, I need another thousand frames to put over here if I filled up every box that I had. So they're sharp looking boxes. I'll have to give you that. Those are the cheapest boxes you can buy. Um, Did you those, those are those paint them some or what? They look slick looking. Um, well, I, I used Helmsman on them. And I lasered them right with my laser, but the they're twelve dollars a box. That's and then, yeah, and those frames uh, are were two dollars and fifty cents. The same ones that Ed was talking about on his video that he got for dollar twenty five for a foundation, dollar twenty five for a frame. So two two fifty for a, a wax foundation, but um oh that's that's uh that's your Lloyd there. Maybe I make a road trip this weekend. Well you're like nine hours away from me, right? How far is Lloyd from you? An hour? No, fifteen minutes. Fifteen minutes? <laughs> what you doing tomorrow night, Charlie? I could use some uh some blue crab. Uh, My wife would do some crab cakes. We'll just drive up. I'll leave in the morning and drive up to Maryland and pick up some beeswax. I got nothing better to do. Sorry, Dene. I'm still yawning over here. <laughs> but, you know, for, for 12 bucks a box and... Uh, I think for 14 you can get them wax dip already. So and he said that's, that's something I did this week. I wax dipped some more boxes. I'm done. Charlie, you got something with the uh, Baltimore beekeepers this weekend? Oh, you're muted, Charlie. We had um, a little meeting last night. This weekend, it's um, I should be getting queens, and I'm installing some queens. And tomorrow afternoon, hopefully, get into those two highs and pull queens. Let me so, see. What's the town you live in, Charlie? Falston. Falston. F A L L S T O N. Uh, let me see. It's only eight hours and six minutes. There you go. So I ordered Maybe right after this. I need to make some honey because I ordered 20 more five gallon buckets from. Uh, from Berlin Packaging the other day. How much do they charge you for a five-gallon bucket? It's like eight bucks. With the lid? No, it didn't, didn't did not include the lid. I didn't really want the lid because I've kind of fallen in love with these lids that I get at Harbor Freight. They're so easy to get on and off. They don't have those stupid little tabs that you, you know. So... I just want the buckets and I'll buy these lids from Harbor Freight for like $2 or something. 
and you get them for eight bucks, and they ship them to you with the eight bucks if you order over three hundred. Probably bucks. the only thing Harbor Freight sells it's made in the USA. <laughs> but yeah, I get I, I I the reason I bought them from them, you can get them on Amazon for about that too. What's the thickness of those that you're buying? The ninety mil. The ninety mil ones. Yeah, the thicker ones. But I felt like they would probably be good quality. I didn't want to take a chance with whoever I would get on Amazon. But they're having a special that I guess it's still on. I just did this yesterday, I think. They're having a special where they, I couldn't buy them before because they were considered freight because they were so big. But they, they've they been waiving their freight charges. So I was able to get them with free shipping. I ordered $300. I ordered like 100 and They were like 150 160 for those. And I added just my honey jars to it. Just look in here. So he Five. Said, they got seven where I buy my uh, swarm lure bottles. They got 70 mil thickness for $6.72 a piece. That's pretty the 70 mil, yeah. And then the 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 night the thicker ones are a little bit they're more than what you're paying. It might have been eight fifty, but it was the it was the same or less than what you could get five buckets for on Amazon. Of course, you could have bought, I could have bought one bucket if I wanted, but you can look it up on Barrage and see what it is. Well, I was looking at this because they have, they also have the, um, um, the one gallon like feeder pails. Right. Um, $2 and 37 cents a piece. If you buy 96 of them. Or two dollars and sixty-eight cents, one through ninety-five, without the lid. The lid is because you you have a selection of lids you can buy, right? Right. Yeah. Spouts and no spouts. I'm really hoping that this fits the bucket. That's what I. If I if I get twenty buckets and I I might have to turn around and buy lids from them if these don't fit. I think it's pretty standard. Let's see. Yeah, that's what yeah. I've heard about 70 mil. If you, I mean, if you lose a bucket of honey, that's way more money than you would have spent on all your buckets. But they have uh, honey bottles too. So, but the honey bottles they have are a little bit different. I'll sh show these. Um, they've got the bears, obviously, 40 cent a piece or 54 cent a piece if you're buying up to 500. Um, one pound bears are 71 cent. Um, of course, the lids, different bears. They had, um, where's uh, buckets? There was one that I found in, I think it was in glass containers, candle glass. When I went to candle glass, they had the hex yards, right. Yeah, nine ounce though, not eight ounce. So, yeah, that nine ounce will hold uh, 12 ounces, uh, 13 and a half, roughly. So, yeah. almost a pound of honey in there, right? Yeah, just under a pound. My square mm -hmm. jars are nine. What is that square jar there, Bob, to the right of that? This one, yeah, it's a nine ounce. It says it's oval hex. Oh, it's got a little, the, the corners are not quite as, yeah. How much do they want for that one? Dollar six a piece okay. if you order over 72. My 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 square jars, I order, like, they're expensive, like a dollar 67 each. So if you get the clear round ones, they're 41 cent a piece if you. Really? Do, do, can you get free shipping? Is there a. Um, no, they're shipping. T typically not free. Um, That's the problem I have is, you know, I want to order $500 worth of jars. And if I don't get free shipping, they want to charge me $300 to ship the damn thing. So six ounces should put, uh, what, about nine ounces of honey in it? Yeah. Um, I'd be interested in that round one. Are those hexes? Um, I believe, let me... Let me go back to the thing here. Uh, glass. 
Sometimes you can go to the overstock and find them on clearance, different ones on clearance, right? That are cheaper. Where are they ship out of? Kentucky. Okay. Yeah. I can't. And of course, I go to order bottles for Swarm Lure and they're out. <laughs> they're out of the size that I need. So I think uh, most of the ones I get come out of Chicago, but they, they're all over. They, they're kind of a broker for all a bunch of. Look at this. This says chat with a human. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> but the lady I talked to on the phone yesterday was out of. Uh, she was actually in Idaho, so they do some remote work stuff. So but they, they definitely have, have every kind of cap, enclosure, and bottle that you could want. So this is a sixteen ounce. Or a 12 ounce, that's like a mason jar, right? 69 cent. That's pretty cheap. Yeah. And it's smooth as compared to the writing and everything. So right. that would actually be a good jar for like my pints. Well, that's a one pound jar, but be uniform. So what I'm trying to do with pretty much everything that even my frames and everything is I'm trying to standardize, right? So I can use one label, one bottle, or one type of bottle that'll hold all the labels, one type of box, one type of frame, just trying to make everything a little bit uh, a little bit cheaper from that aspect. Because uh, I think I figured out if you, that, well, it's right here, actually. So when I order my labels, or which conveniently enough is the same size label that I was putting on those hex jars. Uh, I think they're eight cents a piece when I order them by 2000, it was 250 bucks for 2000 labels shipped. So it was eight, eight cents a label to do them this way. Now, bad part is it's not a roll. So you got to peel them all, which is a pain, which is why I have a, a labeling department in the other room when she watches Netflix. Um, but it is cheaper to do it that way, even than printing them off because it costs me 15 cents to do them when I print them off on my printer or 14 cents plus whatever the ink is. Right. So if I can design it and upload it and have them send me 2000 of them and they all work on all my jars, well, that's much cheaper. So, I mean, we're talking almost half price. And probably by the time you figure the ink and everything, it probably is half price. But, uh, you know, just a different way to do it. So, that's my two cents on that. So, oh, got dead air. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> you can check your cell phone, Bob. Check my cell phone. I uh, sent you something. These are texts from me. Sending me nude pictures again, Charlie? Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> I will say if anybody does want to go to Berlin and order those buckets, I couldn't get it to work on checkout, so I got into one of those little chats. And she said something was wrong and just to call it in. And I called it in and told them what she said. And they processed the order right away and gave me free shipping. Well, I'll tell you what. Uh, really, I guess you could say been selling Swarm Lure for really one full year, right? Calendar year, one season to one season. And I've gone through uh, from that company 2,000 bottles and lids. So, and I bought several hundred bottles off of Amazon prior to finding somebody to supply them to me. So, figured I probably sold 2,000 bottles for sale and retail, and given a went a ton away too, right? So it wasn't all sales, but you know, it's pretty good for doing it right over there on the other side of the computer um, and getting a few few suppliers.
Yeah, that's the same thing um, that's with the you the Gamber container, right? Is that the one lid fits all those different sizes? But yeah, they I mean, have like uh, they have the three gallon, or sorry, three, not the three pound, three pound quart pound. size, three pound yeah, thing, three right? Pound. But it, with a handle on it, right? So, but it uses the same same closure, so it's uh, that type of thing. But I didn't want to order a pallet of them. And so I said, I was, well, I'll tell people about it. Maybe they'll order from you. And she's like, well, you know, you could also order them by the pallet and then resell them. I'm like, yeah, but I can't because I don't have the storage for that, that type of stuff. Right. And then it would be too easy for me to say, you know what, just go get a case off the porch. <laughs> I try to separate what I'm selling and what I'm keeping type of thing. But Let's see. Splitting away. Hi, Lee. See you, Lee. I guess he's working tomorrow. Hi, Lee. Well, he gets up real early, too, and he's probably making up for rain or something. Swarm catching or something. Hey, Carl. <laughs> yeah. So, Todd, are you doing anything special in your highs? I know it. He muted, Todd. You're muted. I'm going back to singles. And I'm also going to go back to Carniole and Queens. I'm going to get rid of the Italians or phase them out. Um, what are you? You were doing doubles there for a while or what doing doubles because of possible pollination contracts but that didn't work out with uh with the guy here so um i'm not gonna yeah you know, i had a mess on my hands with doubles this year so i'm not gonna do that anymore and then half of that problem was the italian queens they so, so they're prolific too 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 robust as far as laying up everything yeah, I, you know, they start, they really never quit. And in February, they start really turning the corner, <clears throat> whereas Carney Olins will, they'll, they'll, they'll start getting going in, you know, middle of March. And that's what you want if you're, well, that's what I want because I got a bunch of oranges out there. Um, so... If I have the Italians, I all of a sudden I have a queen problem. You know, if I want to do splits, what am I going to do? So uh, there are not too many. There are not too many, if, if any, drones flying around in February. So you know, it's I, I'm just I'm not going to play that game anymore, and I'm just going to. Yeah, now Monica, there she wants to know why carnies. Oh. Hey. Carnies, because they they start maturing around the same time as uh, oranges start blooming. Well, a couple weeks before oranges start blooming, they're easier on uh, stores in the winter time. Uh, mm -hmm. Don't let them fool you. In late February, if you crack the lid and look down at them, you see like a little teeny um, bunch of them there. Um, they they uh, they really start moving. Uh, at least in my area in California, uh, late February, early March. And so they peak, well, they're not peaking, but they really get to a good size in uh, third week or so of, of uh, March. So that's why I want to go back to, uh, to Carney's. I see. And I, you know what they seem not that, not the, Ita not that the Italians have, uh, bad attitudes that I have, but the carnies I get, which I get from Jose, I have his line in my in my yard. They are nicer. They are they are more gentle. Um, they're just they're all around. Good well, people. another thing is they're also a California queen, so yeah, yeah, and they're they're used to your environment and stuff. Yeah, yeah, but they will scare you because that cluster in the wintertime is tiny. And you think, oh no, they're dead. But no, they're not. No. It's just how they are. Matt, yeah, there's a lot of corny in my bees. 
What's that? I said I got a lot of carny genetics in my bees, but they're much now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Monica's introducing. Um, yeah, they're good. They're Carnies good. Are her stuff. You, you'll like them. You just don't next next February. Don't freak out when you crack open a lid to put pollen patties down. If that's what you, I don't know what area you're in, but after everybody, that. yeah. Let's see. Monica's got AZ highs. Now, for uh, Phil, this will be interesting. A Mission Believe is also a, uh, it's her, I guess I call it her program where uh, for uh, disabled veterans and like she uh, does the AZ highs. So for some, a veteran might be in a wheelchair that all you have to do is open the back of the, like a sort of like a cupboard in the kitchen and there's your bees right in front of you. Um, but she does, um, she does that. And Monica is a, uh, she does, she, she really likes uh, honey competition. And um, she's done very well in that competing. I know in 2019, I think it was, uh, she won the grand prize for EAS competition down there with a silver silver plate and all that kind of stuff. Um, um, on that note, anybody in the chat or here on the live stream interested in, in on, about honey competition or anything? We maybe she could possibly give a them or a, what do you call it a, a uh, presentation. Uh, Presentation. That's it. That's a lot of lost of words. That's all right. And uh, she, uh, I'd have to say, I have her had her do a presentation at my club meeting, and um, I thought it was going to be boring, to be quite honest with you. And I even told her that, and it was like totally heavily involved the way she prepares months in advance and stuff like that. So. But uh, she has, uh, she's helping out the veterans. I hear she's got a AZ hive house, a honey house, I guess you call it, beehive house. I'd like to see those. I don't know if she could present something like that. I'll have to talk to her. We'll see. And um, yeah, she's got a. Yeah, she said yes, she would do that. You can do a presentation on your AZ high. I know you have a bee house. She has a big, an old big hay barn that she's converted into a area for all the veterans to come and congregate. And, and she has classes there for them and for, uh, and also promotional uh, events to help raise money and things of that nature also. So yes, you can. Well, I'll get in contact with her. Maybe she can do a thing for, you know, highs for her, the uh, Mission Believe and all that kind of stuff. Thank you, Brian. Appreciate that. She was also set up at, um, at Nobby this year, too. And all with her program. So, so Carl, what are we doing? As you, I seen that you said you were ahead of the program. So, Carl, you said, let me put this, bring this up. You put a liquid feed in March with apis and pollen patties. Did you see a big difference in? population growth so hey Ed All right, a big boost and faster buildup. Yeah, 
I'd have to agree with that. <clears throat> and then DC says pretty much the same thing. Apis with pollen patties with Apis and uh, some syrup. Starting out good. Hey, Grammy, Lisa. <sighs> Anything else, guys? <laughs> I don't know. I think I'm getting pretty darn tired. Yeah, me too. I had a busy day today with that swarm and going through all my horizontal nukes. And working. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, I, I think I plan, I plan on putting all the supers on this weekend. All my hives. I got half of them on, but now I'm going to put some more on. Yeah, I hope to put some on when I get out to the farm, but tomorrow it's just going to be raining here, I think. Yeah, it's supposed to be sunny and cool, 58 degrees. But that's warm enough. I'll just be taking the lids off, putting queen excluders on, and putting boxes on. Well, it's supposed to be maybe some rain in the morning or something like that, but then it's supposed to get sunny in the afternoon and Saturday. It's supposed to, or Sunday, uh, Saturday afternoon, sunny. Sunday's going to be sunny. And then Monday and Tuesday is supposed to be pretty good, Tuesday. Yeah. I got another swarm to get at my brother's farm. It's an hour's drive. And he said the other two traps, I got three traps there, are being hit big time with scout bees. So I'm just trying to hold off. If we could make one trip and pick up two or three swarms. All right. I think I'm going to go get those bees and bring them and set them up in my yard. And then I'm going to go to bed. We'll put a white light on top of your head. Yeah. <laughs> I, you know what? I can't find my red light, so I might have to. It will be easy. I'll lock, I'll lock them in. Hopefully, there won't be any holes around the edges. I think my wife already went to bed. She's not feeling good today. That reminds me. I need to tell my mother-in-law I'm going to be creeping around her backyard. I don't want her to shoot me. <laughs> <laughs> You're not supposed to discharge firearms in the city. <laughs> yes, yeah, exactly. She'll make an exception. You, uh, Tom, do you shake your bees down before you put the excluders on, or are you, or are you just are they in, in single boxes to start with? Yeah, I go to sing, I do single brood management. So, all my hives right now are singles. I got them down into singles. Yeah. So, they, they, I need to put boxes on because they're starting to get pretty big. Well, some of them, I already have some of them. One of them's got three. Supers on them already. Yeah. But not all of them. My first, the ones I've got supers on, my first super is pretty well full. I'm working on second on some of them, you know. So I imagine we're on yeah. about the same time frame, you know. I'm not a big fan of equalizing hives. It's like, why should I help a, ba a bad queen and just and hurt a good queen? Yeah. So I just, some of them, you know, some of them won't get supers on for like another couple more weeks, and some of them had them on two weeks, three weeks ago. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I mean, it's like you say, if it's if it's a weak queen and they're not doing well, that's you need to rework. You know, worry about maybe replacing the queen and stuff like that. Yeah. I've been a lot I've more aggressive than that, especially this right. year. Uh, new queens. I pinched uh I pinched 13 and replaced this week. And then I've added some to my some of my splits that I use put in about yeah. uh, I think twenty six this week. 27. All right, guys, I'm going to get off of here. 
Y'all have a good good evening. Right. Good night. Yeah, I think I'm getting off too. Everybody have a good weekend. All right. See you, Tom. Well, it's 10 o'clock. Maybe we'll just uh, call it quits for tonight. I got to go get some food. Got to get some food? Yeah. I'm going to have to raid the taco truck down the street, I think. I don't <laughs> feel like cooking tonight. Yep, everybody's leaving out. So, <laughs> ran out of conversation, didn't they? Well, it's, you know, um, what's he say? I don't know what he's getting, JW. Uh, he's talking about the, I guess, about the, the putting in all the queens. I got that numbed. I'm almost caught up, I think. So. All right, Sunday. My nukes are in Sunday. <laughs> yeah. I've got some salt to salt to stuff coming later on. Some uh, different genetics I'm going to try, but that won't be till June. So late June. Right. We'll try some of that Caucasian stuff. That, the boy, the Appalachian boys, when Benny and them guys is all see how they work out here. So Matt Morris, you said uh, a bag got stolen. You did you get robbed or what? Thanks, Melissa. Bag, bag of what? I don't know. He said a bag out of his truck. You must. I got let the dog out, Charlie. I'm not leaving you. All right. <laughs> Hey, Darren, why don't you come on in? Oh, my. Go Oh, dime? I don't know. I don't know, Brian. What do you got going on tomorrow, Charlie? Your weather, your weather holding up? Nah, it rained today and it was cloudy. It was 55 degrees at the high and I had my winter coat on. Oh, on yeah. I, I do remember. I, sorry, I was driving home and I heard that. That's all right. And then uh, tomorrow I want to try to get into two, the last two hives that I need to um, pull the queens out. I did. I... Two nights ago, I went out there and it was overcast, really bad, and and it was it was almost like dark time. Hmm. Uh, I broke into his cab and stole my work bag. Okay, he must be working in a very <laughs> poor area. <laughs> but uh, anyway, uh, I got five out of the six, five of them. Queens pulled and I put them in two frame mating boxes and locked them up and put them off to the side. And I could really see, you know, the Queens, I mean, yeah, there's plenty of bees in there and some brood and, but there was like scat, like a lot of drone all over the place and not real good solid patterns. And it was like, yeah, you could, you know, once you start observing and, and realize what you're looking at, it's like, man, you can really tell the difference, you know, and yeah. a good queen versus a, a queen that's starting to diminish. And, and then, um, <clears throat> so I got all them done and I mean, there was one queen in there. It was a tiger strike. I mean, it looked like a tiger with stripes going across, you know, with brown and black and brown and black and big old girl, you know, and, but she wasn't doing all that wonderful. And, um, so anyway, like I say, yesterday, or, yeah, I guess it was yesterday, Thursday. Yeah. Um, I got five of them sick or, uh, put out into uh, boxes. And so, um, I got two more to go through and they, every time I've been getting into them, they've been pretty, pretty mean, 
but they seem to be if the weather if it's bright sun bright sun then they don't seem to be quite as as <clears throat> mean yeah at all hmm. and the only thing i noticed is i bought some new jeans and they're got spandex in them <laughs> they're not true true uh jeans you know uh, not yeah. Heavy enough <laughs> Yeah, I mean, darn bees go right through them, sting the hell out of my legs. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm like, I've never had this problem before at all. Yeah. And uh, of course, I've never, I've been trying, the last time I went to buy jeans, I, I was, I said, don't you have any real material here? Instead of this, no. So. I got some of that, uh, last time I was at Sam's Pub, that all, it's in a white container, the little packs you just throw in the washer that are no scent, no dye, none of that stuff on it. And uh, I noticed that they don't attack my clothes like they were when we were just using the regular gain with the whatever smell is in there, right? So, um, well, the one night they got to attacking me right there in my right knee, and I mean they just like they like a bunch of them just focused in on that one area there. At least it was only the knee. Usually they'd get a little higher. They're sitting in a leg, but not not right or left. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right. I, mine are going up my thighs you know like you know i'm like they get me here and there occasionally and i'm like you know i'm gonna have to get some of my old jeans even though they're maybe oversized and use them and they'll be baggy that way they can't you know won't be tight against my legs or whatever now speaking of stings yesterday i went through all those did that 21 splits yesterday i don't wear gloves i never got stung all day Finished up, pulled off to the side in the shade. Was talking to a young lady there that was there while I was doing all this, and 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 flopped my veil back. <laughs> Guess what? Got popped right here. <laughs> Ooh, nice. Yeah, I don't. Yeah, I don't. Uh, I don't like that at all. I mean, that's too close to my eyes. I hadn't got stuck all day, and I just was kind of resting a little bit, sitting there and in my. Yeah. I got a friend that lives down the road about eight mile. He called me. He's going to be out of town. Asked me if I, I'd check around his hives for swarms. And his hives are back in the field. And he had a four-wheeler there. And he told me where the key was. And I wrote, He said, you can ride the four-wheeler back there. Don't try to drive back there. You get stuck. I drove it by. And I wasn't within 30 feet of those hives. Hmm. And I'll be doggone of another one. Yes, afternoon. Come. And it caught me right below the eye down here so i got stung twice right here with this right eye yesterday and i hadn't been stung in the face for a long time mm. but here. yeah i'll have to try that dan get some maybe a car hard definitely would work because i've never bought full bee suit or pants of bee suits or anything like that so yeah, but anyway do you uh you talk about getting your nukes next week how do you no. feed those charlie or do you feed them how are you going to feed them you know i ain't gonna feed them i think there's enough stuff coming in right now uh exactly. their nukes are coming in sunday i lloyd was getting 300 in and i'm um, getting part of that order and you going to put them in 12 or 10 frame or yeah it depends i got enough boxes i either had to buy more medium boxes or i got to look in and i have 10 frame deeps and of course they're deep nukes and i'm thinking to myself well if i throw you know since i got that hive lifter and all and um i'm gonna i got enough deep frame boxes 10 deeps that um i can do four highs right off the bat so I'm just going to drop them in those four and um, uh, and put some drawn comb with them and then um, put a queen, you know, if anything, get them, they'll be, you know, they'll have enough time there to build out to those other drawn combs as far as her land. And I'm going to throw a queen excluder on there and a honey super on. And then the other ones I'm set up. And the highs behind me there, they're set up on three mediums. So what I'll do is, is I will drop a five frame nuke box down deep, transfer them into that five frame box out of that uh, pro nuke. 
And then I will put in probably three medium. I could take the frames out of those dead outs, put two boxes of medium on top so she can go, you know, they can go right up into those maybe three boxes of mediums and transfer them from deeps to mediums. So, and do it that way. And, um, and uh, you know, it'll work out good that way, I think. And uh, whether I, those, I'm not sure whether I'll be able to make, make any honey out of those highs, you know, May is right around the corner, which is our peak season. But on the other hand, like you say, the weather has been sort of a roller coaster ride. It's been beautiful for, for three or four days at one days. And then it's back to 55 degrees today. So <clears throat> I think they were saying in the seventies next week. I'm not sure. Yeah, we're supposed to be back. We dropping down into the to uh, I think our our low tonight's supposed to be thirty seven or thirty eight next two really? nights forties wow. and fifties. So I'm looking. Well, see, you, yeah, you guys out there in the Midwest, you were in the seventies for oh, yeah, way earlier, days. way earlier than what we were here on yeah. the coast. On the coast, we had rain and cold, you know, while you guys were in the 60s and 70s. Yeah. Hey, Sebastian. And um, so, if, I don't know, maybe it's turning around for you. It's like Bob says, uh, it sort of evens out things and all. Yeah, it gets too hot here too early. We usually get them damn twisters, you know, so. Well, I've seen a lot of them on the news. Yeah. So that's our problem around this area. Hey, Carl. How we doing, guys? <laughs> you froze. I think you're, well, there you go. Now you're getting delayed. Yeah, I'm downstairs. I got kicked downstairs, so. <laughs> <laughs> the nine-year-old has Taylor Swift on a, a concert upstairs, so I was kicked out. Yep. Yeah. So. That takes precedence, you know. Yeah. <laughs> well, I'm going to go, guys. I'm going to get some food. I'm hungry. All right, Todd. Thanks for coming in. You, Todd. Uh, <laughs> yeah. I'm sorry it was so quick, Carl. Darn it. That's all right. <laughs> I got to get some food in me. I'm, I'm starving. Don't uh, blame you. All right. Well, I'll see you guys next time. Take care. Mm -hmm. Have a good one. See you, Todd. Right, you too. Bye bye. So, give us an update on your bees, Carl. I know you said you were feeding and they're uh, building up whatever. I started feeding real early. I, I mean, I, I still had icicles hanging and I started putting the feed on as soon as I started getting some warm days and that. And I took the chance and I think it's paid off, to be honest with you. You know, plus I've been putting the apis in there and I made my own pollen patties with the apis in it because I wasn't fortunate enough to go out to the show like you guys. And a lot of you guys, at least, I know Bob. Bob had some circumstances he couldn't make it out, you know. So, but I didn't get to pick up some of the stuff. So I made my own pollen patties with the apis mixture and that, and it's really starting to pay off. I think, to be honest with you. So, I mean, well, uh, you're not feeding any pollen patties now, are you? I mean, no, I no. About uh, I think the last round was about two and a half, three weeks ago, right around Easter was the last time I, I put the pollen on because I still wasn't, I still didn't have any pollen coming in. I actually, right now is the first time I could say it's coming in really strong, the, the pollen about the last week or so. It, it was, you know, because we are still having nights in the upper twenties and low thirties, you know, and in fact, we have one or two coming up in the next week, the same thing. It's terrible. So of course you're up there next to Wilkesbury. Yeah. I've been in the yep. mountains up there, so they're a little bit colder. Yep. But I've been splitting, and uh, I, I can't say I, I've seen queens come back mated yet, but I know I uh, I was in uh, over last weekend. I've been sick as hell, but I, I got out there to put some more feet on, and I did pop one or two boxes, and I could see where queens have emerged. And uh, I didn't really go diving in, but I could see where some queens have emerged in the ones that I did splits on. And I'm just waiting to see if it's successful with the weather. They're like a roller coaster and the wetness and everything else. But the bees are, are booming out of the box, so I'm, I'm hoping it works out. I've, I've had drones for over a month, so 
I, it shouldn't be an issue on that end, I, I'm hoping. So we'll see what happens. So. Mm. But, so you've been sick. What what's what do you got? Or what's what's going on? I had it started with a eye infection that went into my other eye, and it turned out at the same time I started with an ear infection. And it's been going back and forth between the two of them. And then the doctors gave me eye drops, and I've never had an eye infection before, and I was allergic to the eye drops. Mm. So that that was pleasant. So it turned out I went back to the kids' eye drops, which worked well. And they finally gave me a prescription for the kids' eye drops because it was completely different. But at the same time, I had the inner ear infection. And if I coughed, my equilibrium would go off. And I literally would be, be like ready to faint. So it, it was uh, – I had about 10 days of that. Actually, this past Tuesday was the last time – I finally got a prescription in me and for the last three, four days. And finally, and I, I feel like a regular human being again, to be actually <laughs> honest time. with you. I finally so. got a prescription in me and for the last three, four you days. Have to turn your YouTube off, I'm Jimmy. Regular human being again, to be actually On which one, Charlie, the TV or the phone? I don't know. Which one are you communicating? I guess the TV. Okay. I turned the volume on the TV off. Is that better? Yeah, that's fine now. Now we don't hear everything. All right, good. Thanks. Um, so we're getting there. I'm hoping I can get into bees tomorrow, though. Yeah, I mean, I've had that situation years ago where my inner ear was whacked out, you know, and you everything's a vertigo and all that kind of yep. stuff. Man, that, that just, it makes you sick and everything else. Yeah, and I, I was fighting it because, you know, being self-employed, I got to work. And I was doing, you know, half two thirds days and, and, you know, I'd go until I started feeling it really coming on mid afternoon and start heading back. And, you know, the last thing you want to do is be going down the interstate and sneeze or cough and you can't see where you're going. That's not a good situation to be in. Yeah. So I was yeah. pretty cautious about it, but it, it's finally, I'm starting to get over it. So. So where are you going, Jimmy? I'm going to show you my bees, Charlie. I want you to tell me if you can see them. Yes. There's a hive there for sure. They're going to see you in a minute. <laughs> oh, they won't. These are inside bees. These are docile bees. These, are, these bees live with me. This is my daughter's bedroom. I laid these wood floors. That's Brazilian koa. That is the package, and today is their 21st day. But I live pretty close to the campus at CSU, and that package, I can do simple math, continued to grow every day. And yeah. how you, how you uh, they got some way of going outside? Yeah, I have an east-facing window. I own this home. It's uh, not nothing special, a uh, two-car garage. Three bedroom unfinished basement. Uh, this is my bedroom where I sleep. I'll turn this around here in a second. Those were the Italiano, these are carnies. This package, I did not put another double deep on. They're quite a ways from their first hatch, but they have filled this 12 frame up. Their access is out that window and that window. And I thought this might happen because I uh, a pretty good place to live. <laughs> I got pretty nice floors. The girls are bitching about the lack of completion, much like the wife. But they they do not tag me. They are super docile. They had become house pets. I don't know why, but they have. Where are you located at, Jimmy? I'll give you guys my address off air so you can glimpse. What, I'd like to stay. What state, what state are oh, you in? Uh, Fort Collins, Colorado. Colorado. Yeah, so is the, weather, is the weather out there warm or is it cold? 33, 33 this morning when I got up, but I usually wait for the carnies to wake me up. Now that is one of the uh, experiments that I've done with insulation. So 
the carny girls wake up the last. And so when they, they hit a window, then I open the window, I let them out. Right. And so I am a bee haver. I have a shit ton of great comb and I cannot stand that moniker. It fucking keeps me. Oh, sorry. I'm sorry. Right, sorry. We sorry. Keep, we keep sorry. Keep sorry. I'm sorry, guys. It keeps me up at night. So, yeah. Uh, uh, we can call Vegas and see if I can keep them alive till next year. I, I think I got a shot. Uh, it seems like they like to live here. So my first few days, I have experimented with some of these bottom boards that I emulated from, uh, well, first of all, I got to get past this with JW. JW, my grandfather was a Galloway uh, he raised Galloway cattle. It's where I established my work ethic. Uh, he lived in Grenville, Texas, in New Mexico. Uh, my family used to rent me out to him when I was a very small kid for a dollar a day and a bull calf that I would bring back to Fort Collins, Colorado on 3620 Royal Drive and raise that bull calf for a year and sell it back to my grandfather for $500, then it became $600 and $700. And he did that as it went. He bred Galloway bulls. It's where I learned my work ethic. I, I am retired on the Burlington Northern Santa Fe Railroad. I put 42 years in there, never got injured until some guy plowed into me uh, at a hotel room. Me and Burlington Northern will chat one of these days. Yeah, I call those, uh, Jimmy, I call those Galloway's uh, Oreo cows, you know, the belted Galloway's, were they belted? No, uh -uh, but I love those belted, but my dream, and it will be, it will be attained, trust me, fellas, I was a money maker on the railroad, I was a fuel truck driver extraordinaire, I say that because my, my, uh, it can be researched, <laughs> my father, was a parasitologist. Pretty big show. He's dead and gone. Rest in peace, pops. My father would kick my ass if he knew my lack of mite control last year. I do deserve, deserve the beating that he would hand me out if he was alive. And I'd lay there and let him beat me. So well, that's enough said about that. I know why my bees died. There's no mystery to that. Except that at the end... I was trying to sleep with them, and I basically killed them. Uh, you know, I brought them into this pump house that I have in my house. I have a koi pond out back. It is uh, six foot deep, uh, 20 foot wide, uh, 40 foot long. Unfortunately, they are livestock. That is my herd. I had a pretty good idea how big they were. My second biggest koi died. You don't name your koi. She didn't have a name, but her breed was a Goshika, and she weighed 24 pounds, and she was my second biggest. They're all about that a size. They uh, are 15 years old is when I built this uh, pump house and koi pond, and I built it myself. And so I am talking to you guys because there was very many koi sites that knocked the shiny off the koi industry and save those people some money. And I don't like how older people are throwing their money away on this Apame bullshit. That's an igloo fucking, um, that's an excuse. I'm sorry, guys. Well, maybe just go after hours with me. I have some insulation ideas. I dropped some of that stuff on uh, Fred Dunn's deal. He didn't make a comment. I, I, I uh, Matt Rissinger is a hero of mine. And when I get some money, and I will, I don't won't try to ask somebody. I won't look for a contractor. I have watched Matt Rissinger's kids grow up. I have followed his concepts of insulation and all that. And so when I saw a goof jump off a, a hive with a hat on and promptly showed the YouTube world that he had the answer, that everybody should sit back and relax. I was sitting on my couch, uh, enjoying my retirement, kind of doing what I ever wanted to do. I, I, it turns out I'm a pretty good TV watcher. 
And I did a little bit of that on the railroad because my last job on the railroad was a rail grinder train. And a rail grinder train is like, can you think of the funnest job that you can have and pay you a, shit, a lot of money? And so my job on the rail grinder train was when they were grinding rail and a fire popped out, I got to jump out the back with a whole bunch of other fellas that I grew up with on the railroad because you got to have studly seniority to hold this job. This is 150 right. grand a year. Jimmy, Jimmy. Yeah. all right, we got to. Okay, all right. I won't monopolize it. I'll uh, stay on. And if you guys have an after-hour thing, I want to talk some uh, insulation uh, philosophies, and then I'll need to go to bed. But yeah, what, what what time do you shut that off, Charlie? There is a uh, ready to uh, shut down now oh. and everything. So okay. I mean, it, for yours, we're several hours ahead of you. So. All right, well, everyone, I'm going to go ahead and shut the stream down. Um, I, like I say, possibly have a special guest next week. Just keep your eye out for the notification.